All right, this is going to be a little how to DIY your sprinkler system. So I actually recently decided to put in a sprinkler system here, and I uh, looked around online, and you know the average quote for probably my size yard is anywhere from three to five grand. So that's a lot of money to dump. So I decided to do it myself, which I enjoy doing these kind of projects anyway. So I'm going to kind of walk you through uh, the parts and kind of how I did it. You know. Uh, from some of the research I've done online. So, uh, to start with, uh, I have uh, six zones, and uh, two are in uh, the front, one's on the side, another on the side, and then a couple in the back. And uh, so, what we're looking at here are the actual valves that control, you know, the water on and off. And uh, these are just, uh, let's see, I think these are, what, well, there they are, Rainbird. Uh, they were like 15 bucks each, um, and uh, they're real simple. All it is is solenoid on top, and then the little uh, flapper valve down there in the bottom that you know opens and closes as needed, and a little 24 volt wire that you have to run uh, back to your control unit. Um, and those are like 60 bucks or so for you know mid grade one. So what I've done is a little trick that I learned putting in the first uh, set of uh, valves and. Uh, zones was if you ever have to take these things out and either replace them or work on them then they screw in and they screw in on this side as well these are threaded so if you think about it you can't unscrew it so what I did is I put a, a PVC union here so you just unscrew this and the whole thing will come off giving you a uh, easy access to take it out and uh, work on it so because from time to time you know they'll clog up or they'll go bad actually the first two I installed had rocks and dirt stuck in them so they wouldn't shut off so uh, that's how I figured out I needed those so let's see uh, I actually bought most of the stuff at uh, I guess Home Depot um, and what's really cool that they have nowadays instead of running PDC everywhere is they have these little uh, Toro looking deals and uh, these actually the ones I, I'm holding right now actually go in the uh, I've got some sprinklers a sprinkler head you know so it sits in the ground and then this connects in the bottom and this hose that you buy for it is uh, some kind of uh, glueless you know it's a little flexible and it kind of it seals around this little uh, tapered edge right here so it's really neat so you just cut it to length and uh, pop it in there and you're good to go so uh, some tools that I definitely recommend is this little pipe cutter thing my dad actually brought this over and let me borrow it this thing is awesome. It'll cut through PVC and it'll give you a nice clean cut. You know, if you cut with a hacksaw or something, you get little burrs and stuff on the edge. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but this one just slices right through it. Makes it nice and clean cut. Uh, glue and primer and all that for your PVC. And some wrenches. So, uh, so those are kind of the valve setup. What I basically have is uh, at each location, I've got a little box in the ground. We'll go look out here in a minute. And I got two uh, valves in each, just uh, that's the way the spacing worked out, so let's go take a look here. So we're going to go to the backyard. So currently, um, uh, we dug a trench, and here's actually my telephone line that we cut into on accident. So internet, TV, and all that went down. So, so here's where we cut it. Sliced it back into there. Neighbor's annoying dog. So here's what I got. This is how I uh, hook into the uh, water line. So if you actually put, uh, go into the main line from the house, you have to get a big, you have to get a permit through the uh, city and all that fun stuff. And I didn't want to have to do that, so um, I came off with a split here. That way I could turn it off in the winter or whenever I want. If it's raining a bunch, you know that kind of thing. I came down and put some uh, insulation on my outside of my pipes. And uh, let's see. That way the weather's not too hard on it. I put a. Uh, this is a. Oops, this is a vacuum release or something. Basically, when I turn this off, lets the pressure out and lets the water all come and leak out. So, from there, it goes down into the ground. And then here's my box that I was talking about. And uh, you can see there's plenty of room in there for a couple. And uh, you don't want to bury these valves uh, because if you ever do have to work on them, <laughs> you know, you don't want to have to be digging around them like a fossil. So, and here's some of that uh, Toro stuff that I was talking about. It's pretty cool, it's flexible, it's easy to work with, and it's small. You don't have to go roll far down into the ground with it either. You know, just make sure you get it far enough that you won't cut it with a shovel or something if you ever have to dig. 
So I think I go down about a foot or so down into the ground. So I've ran uh, one set of lines back here. I've actually got two zones in the back. So you can see all our trenches here. And we got a sprinkler head that is right here. We I kind of run the line and then tee off of it to go to each sprinkler head, but there's one. And uh, so once you get all these installed, get everything hooked up, uh, you are most likely going to have a little bit of dirt, a little bit of gunk in the lines. And I found on the first one I did, I had to go back and uh, pop the sprinkler head off, which is nice. These just unscrew these little green, green areas. They just unscrew and then the whole thing lifts out. And then uh, there's a filter on there, which is awesome. So you just take that out, clean it off, get the gunk out of it. And now mine's been working great since then. So, so we're good to go here in the back. Uh, I meant to do this on the first round, but I had so many uh, learning curves there that uh, just didn't work out. So back here, I got two zones, one going that way, another one going down the back. They come to this box. And then another one, it's going to have two valves that's going to do the side of the house here, right where my telephone line is. And, annoying dog. And another one that's going to be actually out here in the front, on this side, because I didn't want to burrow or bore under the uh, driveway. That would have been a pain, so i got three or four little flags out here that I'm going to... I am going to... Uh, put some sprinklers there so uh, what I found was the easiest to do with uh, digging those trenches was a uh, sharpshooter shovel and a pickaxe the first one I did I used a flat let's see if I have it. these are the tools I had I had a rake a flat shovel and a spear <laughs> and to get those uh, those trenches you know nice and clean and even though it was a pain and it took a long time and uh, so I borrowed a pickaxe from my dad Made it go a lot easier. Here's the front. Dirt here sucks. It's real rocky, a lot of clay. And so here's, this is why I decided not to go from the front side across the driveway was because I had to bore underneath the sidewalk. And let me tell you, this took me four hours to do this. And I'm not gonna do that again. So here's the front, it's all nice and done. I do have a little bit of leak. So when you come off of these spigots, there's this little adapter that goes from the three-quarter inch uh, with a rubber gasket in there to the uh, regular, you know, garden hose fitting. And then it goes into the PVC three-quarter inch. And this, you need to put a ton of Teflon tape on. Um, I still have a little bit of a leak. You can see my fingers wet there. So I've got to fix that, but that's easy to do because just unscrew that put a whole bunch on there and then you're good to go but it's not very much because I've had this on over a week and it's just barely wet you can see the difference in the color there so so that's pretty much uh, a do do it yourself uh, sprinkler system so so far six zones you know I have all the material I need uh, minus maybe some I may need to go get a little bit more of this exterior underground cable it's actually got like uh, four pair in there, so and one is going to be your common or your ground, and then the others are going to be uh, for controlling each valve. So you can run up to like seven zones, I guess, or maybe it's six, two, four, six. Yeah, there's seven wires in there, so you can run six uh, zones off that, which is great. So that's how mine works. So my zones, again, you know. Sprinkler systems over here. My valves are actually right down there where that line in the concrete points. And I run the wire all the way down here and follow this over to the sprinkler and then kind of come across this little crack and go around into the garage. Now I'm going to have to splice into it right here to go across to the other side and I'm going to follow this crack all the way down. So when I do that, there's actually a little bitty gap right back there that I can tuck these wires into, make them nice and hidden. And then I'm going to come back with some kind of tar, or some kind of silicon or something, and fill in this gap so that that wire doesn't ever pop back up and seals that. So that might be the only other thing I need to buy. But of everything else, and I think total, maybe I have spent $500, maybe $600 at the most. Um, 
and most of that, well, you know, maybe 50 bucks of that was my screw ups, having to go back and <laughs> rebuy some fittings and all that. So, um, that's basically how I'm doing it. So, I think I pretty much covered most of the uh, most of the things that uh, I've ran into. So, these unions are awesome, especially if you're going to be in a house for a while. Definitely a good buy. Um, I'm actually not, but I still wanted to go ahead and do it right. But, uh, you know, a sprinkler system will add some value to a house and make it sell. So, that's, uh, that's that. If you have any questions, just let me know.